Hi, I'm David, your developer on duty, and in this video I'm going to show you my project Derive Type to generate JavaScript types based on code invocations. The problem with dynamic languages like JavaScript is that modifying existing code is really hard. When you start a new project, then you roughly know the types of all involved variables. They're in your head and you can concentrate on the actual business logic but most of your code will eventually be modified at some later stage, maybe because of bugs or because you want to implement new features. So you have to touch existing code and try to make sense of it. But as you know, after some weeks, you won't even know if that code was even written by you. You lost the context. Without type information, the only way to know more about the variables is to look at the name and hope that it's descriptive enough. Here, is sold could be a boolean, or a callback function. But that won't be sufficient in most cases. Some developers use the Hungarian notation to encode type information into the name, but personally I don't like that approach because it makes your code somewhat ugly. The other option is to look at its usage. Here we see that x is an object with property b of type number. But the most robust way is to actually invoke the code which you're trying to modify. Then you can see the actual values of those variables. But usually this is a tedious process because you either put many console.glock statements in your code or you inspect the variables using a debugger. In any way, it involves manually executing those tests one by one, which is kind of inefficient. Especially in JavaScript, it's essential to have many automated tests so you can validate your code. Let me introduce the node package derived type. It's based on two ideas. It allows you to automatically generate TypeScript type definitions by running automated tests and inspecting the values of those variables automatically. Once this is done, you can use those types in your JavaScript files using JS doc. This way the TypeScript compiler can give you code completion and validation, and you will actually know what those variables are. Let me guide you through a simple and concrete example. Let's say you have this file main.js where you want to know more about the function foo and its parameters x, y, and z. The names don't give you any information about what the types are and you don't want to follow these nested function calls to analyze the types by their usage. Luckily, since you're writing robust software, you have quite an extensive test suite which either directly or indirectly calls the function foo with proper arguments. You can see that first it's called with three numbers, then with two numbers and an object, and then with only two parameters, a number and an object. Let's use derived type to generate our types based on those tests. The installation is fairly simple. You just install it in your project as a dev dependency. Next, you add the following line at the top of your function body which you want to inspect. Require derived type dot 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 arguments. Last but not least, you use npx to invoke derived type with a command to run your test files. This will run your tests, generate the TypeScript definition files and plug it into your JavaScript code as a JS doc comment. Once this is done, you can refresh your JavaScript file and you will see an additional line which is generated by derived type. It's a JS doc comment providing annotations for your function parameters with a reference to a generated TypeScript file. Now you have type information. Here you can see the generated TypeScript definition. This is not meant to be read, and in general, this can be quite complex. It's usually sufficient if your language server interprets it and provides you code completion or validation. But let's inspect it. The first argument is always a number. The second one is either a number or an object with a property foo of type string. The last one is optional and is either a number or a nested object with property b than c of type boolean. But enough with the slides, let's see that in action. Let's use the exact same example file. We have this function foo, which has some function body, and you can see we don't have any type information. All those parameters are of type any. And it's hard to see what's going on. It's hard to change the code, it's hard to figure out what the code actually does, what parameters those functions expect, and so on. But luckily we have a test file, so let's open it, main test.js, and you can see that 
somehow I referenced this function. It can also be an indirect call through other functions. It doesn't really matter. And you can see I have those three tests, first test, second test, third test, and I can also run those tests. And then you can see that everything is green and uh, that gives us a good base to generate those types. Now, first let's install derived type as a dev dependency. And now we can actually use it in our code. Now let's head over to our main.js file and invoke the function call to our derived type function. Require derived type and I call it with arguments. Now the only thing left to do is to run our tests with derived type. So I run npx derived type chest main test chess. And now the generated file has this additional JS doc comment, which provides us with the necessary type information which we need to develop this function. Now, if I hover over those parameters, I can see that x is a number, y is either a number or an object with property foo of type string, and the same holds true for z, it's a number or an object with b, which is an object with c of type boolean. And with code completion, it's much easier to program. That's it for the demo. If you want to know more about derived type, please head over to my GitHub repository. It's also linked in the description. It's free and open source under the MIT license, so feel free to use it for Git or to open pull requests. Any feedback is most welcome. Keep in mind that this is at a very early stage, basically done over a weekend, so there are most probably some rough edges here and there. Nevertheless, I hope it will be useful to you. Please share your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.